He was the ultimate insider, confidant, advisor, and a senior minister in the Congress government. Natwar Singh, now 83 years old, has created a sensation with his autobiography, particularly on what he has said on the Gandhi family and Sonia Gandhi in particular. Mr. Singh joins us today on NDTV. Mr. Singh, I'm sure you're quite pleased that even before the book's formal release, which is taking place today, the book has created so many headlines. Well, I'm uh, surprised at the response. I really was. Hmm. Why were you surprised? Because there's a lot of interest, particularly in what you have to say about the Gandhi family. No, the, but as I want to say, uh, uh, no, this book is not uh, Sonia Gandhi centric or even the Gandhi family, although this is a prominent part of my life. Uh, I, 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 as we go on, I'll, I'll let you know what. By owe, I, owe, I owe to this family. But, you know, some would see your book as hitting back mm -hmm. or as revenge for the way that you were treated uh, by Sonia Gandhi and when you were forced to resign from the cabinet. How do you respond to that criticism that this is your way of getting back at them? No, you see, the bitterness and revenge are not part of my character. Uh, life's too short uh, to spend time on bitterness and revenge. I was very deeply hurt. Uh, but the idea that I'll take revenge or I'm bitter uh, doesn't occur to me. I mean, what happened is unfortunate. And we passed through a very difficult time for seven or eight years. But bitterness, revenge, meanness, out of my character. But you have used some very strong words mm -hmm. uh, about Sonia Gandhi and, and her, many of them unflattering. You've mm -hmm. described her, uh, particularly during the time of the Volcker Report, as vicious and venomous. Mm -hmm. uh, you have described her as obsessively suspicious. Uh, a prima donna who over the years evolved from being a diffident, nervous, shy woman to an ambitious, authoritarian, stern leader. You say that under her dissent is smothered. You also say that no Indian could have behaved this way against me, which is obviously a reference to her Italian origins. Mm -hmm. You do sound very angry and bitter, if you don't mind my saying. See, first you must realize that Sonia Gandhi is a historic figure. Her place in history is assured. What history's verdict would be, we have to wait. But public figures of this eminence must accept that there will be a very close scrutiny of their life and their activities and their work. And so it was imperative on me to put across what I have said in the book. It is true. Rajiv Gandhi would not have done to me what she has done. Because he's in Indra ji wouldn't do it. Jawala ji wouldn't do it. We have a tradition that people who are older than you, you show them regard. And look at the totality of, to, to, totality of their lives and the loyalty for over 40 years. And now this, anybody born in India would not do. That's, that's a pretty strong comment to make Yeah. about her Italian origin. I am not taking the word Italian at all. I'm just saying... But that, that is the obvious reference. No, no, that, that, that's your conclusion, not mine. But, you know, what you say about her character, about her uh, authoritarian character, as you put it, uh, the fact that she was a, is a stern leader, is that something you discovered only after what happened during the Volcker crisis? You've been in the Congress for so long. You worked with her so closely. Yeah. You didn't see that but side I, of her no, when, I didn't when see things this. were uh, happier? I didn't, uh, no, no. I did see. But I didn't. You see, what hurt me was that I had come from uh, Moscow after talks with President Putin and my opposite number, Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister. And I had to spend the night in uh, Frankfurt. And then early morning, I was woken up by our ambassador in New York, saying the Walker report has come out and it names Congress Party, you and corporate houses as non-contractual benefits. I was stunned. First, I thought I'd go back to New York and meet Walker. And I said, what for? There's nothing in it. I'll go to Delhi and explain. In the meanwhile, the, on, the, on the email came the Congress spokesperson that the Congress is clean, that person can look after himself. Now, this statement couldn't have been made without Sonia Gandhi's approval. It's as simple as that. You're saying you never got a fair hearing. Did you get any hearing at all? Beg your pardon? Did you get any he hearing at all uh, from, from her or from no, no, the no, Prime no. Minister on so your version when, of so, events? So, when I, no, 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 when I came back, uh, I expect, I didn't go to see her because I was very, very hurt. Because I expected she would say, of course, that person will never do anything like this. Neither will Congress party. So, but she didn't send for me to ask me what happened. At least she could have given me a hearing so I could put my point of view across. And from then it started in the newspapers and this and that. I mean, at a, 
India today, country, uh, we sang, we asked her, the, the, the subject of the conclave was not net pressing Sonia Gandhi. At the end of it, he asked, what do you think about net pressing in Walker? And she said, I was very angry and I only have a working relationship with him. But then what explains the turnaround? Because you were her closest confidant. Yeah, no, I, but she said so you, when she came You here. were the insider. So yeah. wha what explains why the sudden vote faced by her? Vis -vis see, you? Nobody in the Congress party has ever defied her. The expectation was that I'll prostrate and go and say, maaf kar dijiye. Now this is just not on. When my honor and integrity is involved, the question of bowing my head to anybody doesn't. Uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh asked me to go and see her. So I said, I'm not seeing her. I said, Manmohan Singh ji, in my veins, the blood of my ancestors flows. I don't know whose blood flows in yours, but we fought the Mughals, we fought the British, I am now fighting you. I will not bow down. But why not give you that hearing? I, I don't understand that. Having been so close to her, mm -hmm. what do you think motivated her to uh, do this turnaround on you? But this is what uh, appalled me. Even say the people around her, I mean, they were resentful that I was so close to her. I could see her any day and we would sit down and talk. And there is a non-political side to Sonia which is very attractive. I mean, she relaxes and she jokes about and talks about things. She interested in music, she reads a great deal. I mean, I first heard of uh, uh, Marcus's book, 100 Years of Solitude from her. Then I bought so, um, she, so many others, she listens to music, she knows that. She knows a lot about art. Because when I went with her to the Hermitage in St. Petersburg, she pointed out to me this, or this, this, or this, this is a Degas, that, 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 about furniture, about decoration. She's very, very, very um, up to date on this. That, that side people don't, don't know. That's a very attractive side of her. But So you're saying you don't understand why? You don't understand? No, no, I, I, is it I a mystery to you? No, two things I told you. One, the people around her told her that, you know, Natwar Singh is so close to you that everybody will say you got the money. And Pathak had said in the report that I Didn't was clean. Didn't need any financial benefit. I was clean. So this was one. The second was why didn't he come and see me? But because this, you know, I, I come back to this question, you know, as you said, you actually said that she was always like this in terms of her, as you put it, authoritarian behavior and so on. But you never spoke about that before. I mean, you know, you've only spoken about it after your exit from the government and the party. No, I didn't say anything. I said it only in my autobiography, which I started writing in 2011. People say, why didn't you come out But earlier? you were okay with the way she was when, when you were the insider, when you were the confidant? Fine. You were no, okay no. with that style no, of functioning no, I, and I that mean, lack of dissent? No, no. There are very many occasions when she was, for example, uh, she refused to see Arjun Singh, uh, who had been a vice president of the Congress, uh, governor, chief minister, cabinet minister. So Arjun Singh ji came to see me. He said, Nathur Singh ji, I don't know why Sonia ji doesn't see me. But, but you didn't so, find no, it problematic no, no, there. No, wait, wait a minute. So I went to Sonia ji. I said, you know, he's very upset and he's very sorry and he's really down in the mouth. Bulali ji said, no, I'll take a few days. <laughs> so she called him. Straight from there she came to my house, Arjun Singh ji. And that was Singh ji, at this level in politics, nobody speaks up for anybody. I'm most grateful to you and will you all my life. But my point is, sir, that you didn't seem to have a problem with that style of functioning that you are accusing Sonia Gandhi of having when you were in the party. That problem seems to have really emerged when you left, which is why we come back to the charge that is this an angry Natwar Singh getting back at her? No, no, it's, uh, I, I mean, you can ask anybody, I don't get angry. It's not that I'm a soft chap. But I just don't get angry because I, no, there are certain things I don't do because I will go down in my own esteem. Ultimately, I am answerable to it. I was aware of the, the it, it, when this was happening, I didn't know her as well as I do gradually. But for example, from 91 to 96, I only saw her in my capacity as vice, vice chairman of the Indira Gandhi Memorial Trust and she was the chairperson. And she was chairperson of the Nehru Memorial Fund as secretary in that country. So when uh, this Narsimara incident took place, I told him that I don't talk politics to, to, to But Sonia. you do sound pretty angry when you call her a prima donna. 
prima donna, you know, it's, a, it's not an offensive phrase. It's not an offensive, it's not an abuse. Oh. Because she's been treated from the day she entered India. Like uh, royalty, uh, royalty. She has, hmm. uh, you are married to a wonderful human being, handsome, generous, large-hearted, witty, and the most important political family. You come from an Italian home, you're 19 years old, the cultural shock. Then, when Indraji, 15 years you are with mother-in-law prime minister. Then your husband is prime minister. Then when he passes away, you are a deity in the Congress party. You know, it's, it takes a hell of a lot to not to think that you are here. But she has, of course, now reacted yesterday uh, to, to your book and, and whatever has come out until now and said that she will write a book of her own. Uh, and, and that will have the truth in it. So she's basically hinting that she's, yeah, your version of events is not the truth. How do you react to her? This is the first time that she's reacted. She never does. Uh, she didn't uh, react to Baru's book or anything, but never. Uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. And I look forward to her book. And I hope she writes it sooner than later. I think uh, she is entitled to her views. And I look forward to reading the book. I have. Uh, it, it, it hasn't bothered me one bit. I'm glad she said so. And she should write. I mean, I have tried very many times to, I think it's in the book. I said, I'm going to write your biography. She said, no, Priyanka is doing it. I said, no, I'll join Priyanka. But uh, I spoke even to... You think it's significant that she reacted? The very fact that she reacted... It is, yeah, absolutely. Why? Because it touched her raw nerve? Obviously, that something, you know, uh, has upset her so much that she came out. If I was advising her, I would say, don't say anything. <laughs> she, you have mentioned in the book that on the 7th of May this year, she actually came to see you along with her daughter Priyanka Gandhi. And, and you say that uh, Priyanka had also asked you whether you were going to be writing about the events leading up to the mm -hmm. swearing in of the UPA mm -hmm. government in 2004. Uh, if you can reveal a little more about that meeting, did, why, why do you think Sonia Gandhi came to see you? I mean, uh, what was she really worried about? Was it just that little, that bit on, on, on what Rahul had said to her before uh, on the issue of the PM's post? What was she worried about in particular? You see, the uh, on the 20th of uh, April, if I remember right, uh, Sumande, Suman Dube, who is a wonderful, a very decent human being, and I had a lot of time for him, invited me for lunch. And he spoke about the autobiography. So I said, you know, I'm not going to write anything cheap or uh, which is not true, but nobody can edit my autobiography. Then on the 20th of April, my interview in the Economic Times appeared. Uh, it was a quite long interview and in which the, I think Mr. Manoj was interviewing me. And he asked, will you be writing about the incidents in which you, the, all these things happened and in, are you bitter about it? I said, no, I'm not bitter, it's not, not part of my character, but I will write the truth. So that very morning, um, Suman Dubey rang me up. Please go and see Mrs. Gandhi in the evening at 5 and 6. I said, I can't. And then uh, Priyanka rang up. Could she come and see me? I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm very busy for a week. I can't see you. So on the 6th of May, she telephoned. Uh, could she come and see me? I said, please do come. And um, she came. And we chatted a lot. I chatted about our children uh, growing up. I said, how are things in UP? She said, in Raibareli and Amiti, they are fine but the rest of it is not so easy. Then she said, we'll not get any seat in Delhi. Uh, you know, uh, uh, then she came to the point that, that I am, my mother has asked me to see you. Mm. Uh, are you going to refer to certain events that happened in uh, uh, May 2004? I said, first again, that, you know, I, nobody will edit my book and neither am I going to do any uh, hit below the belt. This is not my mother. But I will. Uh, I mean, facts are not sacred, but truth is. Uh, and then I told her what had been done to me in the last eight years. Uh, I, I, the whole thing I told her. What we had gone through, which is um, given in the book. I don't know if you've seen it. Our bank accounts and our house bugged. Uh, people sent all over to find out if I have any property in London. I mean, the but then Sonia thing. Gandhi also showed up. Hmm? Sonia Gandhi also showed up at your No, house. no, then uh, she arrived and she was very friendly, very effusive, uh, uh, 
um, overwhelmingly so. Your first meeting in more than eight years. I had, no, I am a life member of the Nehru Memorial Fund and she is chairperson so the meeting takes place, I go there but I don't interact. But once I did about four or five years ago, she asked me to see her about something, I went and nothing was talked. But after that, I mean, in so the last... So this your first real interaction? Well, this, this yeah. when, when she came here. And she came here. So it was those events leading up to the swearing mm. in? No. And that's obviously I, a reference I, to what I, Rahul I, told you. I told her that uh, mm, I have given uh, Priyanka all the details about uh, what really happened uh, to me in these eight years. And then, wait a minute, then she said, I didn't know. So I said, you know, nobody's going to buy that. Priyanka said she didn't no, know. No, no. Mm, uh, Mrs. Gandhi. Sonia, she okay. said. I, I said, nobody will buy that, you didn't know. Because nothing happens in the Congress without your knowledge or approval. Nothing happens in the government without your knowledge. Not even leaf turns in the Congress party. So that... And then I said, uh, Manmohan or any other minister wouldn't have touched me if they didn't have your approval. But you're saying she did that more to protect herself uh, rather than anything else. That the, the reason you were forced to resign was her direction to the Prime Minister because she was advised that this would hurt her personally. Yes, yes, yes. That is the yes, motivation yes, that, yes. that you see. Of course, your most, uh, perhaps the most sensational claim in your book is also that it wasn't her inner voice but her son Rahul who prevailed mm -hmm. on her not to accept the Prime Minister's post. Now, I think one question is even if that was what Rahul did because he was worried that she may be killed if she became Prime Minister like his father and grandmother, it was still quite a big thing for her to give up, would you say? See, I give Rahul full marks for doing what he did as a son for his mother. That my father has been killed, my grandmother killed, you will be killed if you become. As a son, I can't let you do that. And I think it's very noble for him to do. And uh, she accepted uh, what he said. But you know, it was an um, agonizing decision on the other side, but as I told you, I, I think it's, uh, as a son, uh, Rahul did something really remarkable. That he you said, understand where he was coming from? No, I understand that he genuinely, as a son, said, no, you will be killed in six months. And I agree with him. If she had become Prime Minister, she would have been killed. But you actually go on to say that Rahul Gandhi was prepared to take any step to stop his mother mm. and that it was no ordinary threat. Mm. My question then is, what kind of a threat did he make? You say she, he also gave her a 24-hour ultimatum. No, no, he said that no, I won't let you do it. Well, what was the threat? What was no, the ultimatum? The, 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 the threat was that if you do this, you know, I will take some action which I don't want to take. No, no, I will uh, implore you and uh, say that you can't do it and I will not retreat on this. He didn't specify what that action would be? No, he was not there at the meeting. This, this was conveyed when Priyanka was there and one more. But you don't know what, what that threat was? I mean, what his No, I don't, I don't know. The, but obviously, uh, it was so serious. And the, you see, the difficulty was when they, after this, um, she had called a meeting in which she was uh, sitting at the head table. And there was Pranam Mukherjee Sahib and uh, the Dr. Manmohan Singh Ji, Arjun Singh Ji, Shivraj Patil ji, um, I think the Ahmed Patel, Gulam Nabi Azad Sam and myself and one or two others. And she says, you know, I requested Dr. Manmohan Singh to accept the Prime Ministership. And so Manmohan said, no, I, I can't, I don't have to mandate. And so I spoke and said, but you know, the person who has the mandate is giving it to you. So you have no business to say, no, no. no and I, we all help you. But the difficulties was how to convince the UPA partners. But on the point of Rahul, again, you say that it was it, to you it wasn't an ordinary threat because you it wasn't in Rahul's nature mm. to give ultimatums. Yet you don't know what that ultimatum mm. was. Do you think though that Sonia Gandhi should not have claimed that then it was her inner voice that told her not to accept this post, or do you understand why she said that publicly, or do you think that was d d dishonest of her? No, I don't know. I, I really don't know. When did she say this? Apparently at a meeting of, of uh, Congress MPs where she told them that uh, she wasn't, uh, when she actually told them that she was not going to take up this position. She was, and she's been quoted widely from there. Yeah. That she I don't remember her what she voice. said about her inner voice. I don't remember. Anyway, if she did, I mean, what, what's wrong with it?
Okay, so you don't hold, you don't, you don't see that as a point of criticism. No, I don't. I mean, she, she's, uh, I mean, she was under uh, great stress. And it was a major, major agonizing decision to take. Uh, but the, the, as I tell you, the problem was with the UP pa partners. But can I ask you, sir, that, you know, on Rahul Gandhi then, that the fact that he had this fear, as you say, of his his mother uh, possibly be, uh, being killed, the fact that. Uh, uh, you know, his grandmother and father had had been through these very violent deaths. Do you think that that is what has stopped him from taking on a leadership role? Because he's seen as a very reluctant leader in the Congress party. So do you think that this is the reason why he himself is reluctant to take on more responsibility? This had not occurred to you till you asked me. Uh, because, uh, you know, he's a... Uh, He's a very strong-willed person, and he's a, he's not a pushover. He, he he may not be a brilliant politician, but as a human being, he's very tough. And I don't think he he would fear about his own life. Then why do you think he's so reluctant? Hmm. Why do well, you think he's such a reluctant uh, leader? I, 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 let me tell you what I you see. A politics is not a part-time job; it's a full-time job. Two, for politics, you must have fire in your belly. I don't think he had the fire. Now, when he mm, became vice president of the Congress, uh, the expectation is very high that you know he will take the Congress to victory. But the consequences were the reverse. That the Congress party came under 44. Now, the Congress culture is that you can't criticize uh, Rahul or his mother. Uh, but the fact is that they were the leaders of the campaign. And the campaign, the result in 44 seats to you. After emergency, Indira Gandhi got 158 seats in the Lok Sabha. So, if there was free debate in the working committee and the government, then they should have said, you know, you know, they did offer to resign, both of them. And the Congress working committee said, no. What else could it say? That you please resign? Because if they both of them do, the Congress will have two members. But she has held the Congress together for 15 years. But then you feel that Rahul lacks that fire in the belly, as yep, you put it. He does. And therefore, is there any alternative than the Congress has? No. They still have to stick with the Gandhis? Well, you know, they, 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 out of 66, 70 years of you know, the Congress party has ruled for 50. BJP is not a natural party of government. They have only ruled for six, six years. They have, you see, people don't forget that this thing is thrown, that this is a dynastic thing. Well, this is an elected dynasty. Jawaharlal was elected, Indra Gandhi was elected, Rahul, the Raji was elected, Sonia elected, Sanjay elected, and Rahul was elected. So you don't think dynasty is a problem? No, it's not. But people don't understand. But they have been all elected. Nobody has imposed them on the Congress party. They are elected. So you believe that for the Congress to survive, the future still, I mean, the key still lies with the Gandhis. Absolutely. Uh, can you think of anybody else? Why? The Congress is a lot of... Uh, no, you please just give me a name. Just give me a name. A lot of young leaders who are bright. Who? Do they get the kind of opportunities that, say, Rahul does? Well, you have Jyotira Ditya Sindhya, Sachin Pilot. Uh, you have several other young leaders as well. Jitin Prasad. These but were young you, you people please, who are uh, You please well. have uh, uh, asked them that Rahul is not going to be and any of these top will be used, the reaction of the Congress will be. Are you out of your mind? Who's going to vote for you? Okay, so you believe that they are still the vote ca uh, catchers for whatever it's no, worth no, no, these no. days? I told you, if Rahul and Sonia said, no, we are retiring, first of all, the Congress will be divided into five factions. Without them? Without them. There will be five leaders. They will not agree on one person. Nobody will. You know, uh, as you know, and we all know, Dr. Manmohan Singh also rarely speaks. But yesterday, he did speak out on your book and he said that uh, your claims are a marketing gimmick. He also flatly denied that any government files were ever sent to Sonia Gandhi and said that private conversations should not be made public for capital gains. No, the Pretty strong words from no, the three, Dr. Three, three things. Would he have said, yes, I sent files to Sonia? So is he lying? No, no, but let me, I'll come further. Sanjay Bharu has said so in his book. Did Mr. Uh, Manmohan Singh contradict him? He's contradicted you. Yeah, then I'm telling you, uh, 
his secretary Pulak Chatterjee, uh, you think went there to have tea with Sonia Gandhi? When he went every day or every other day? No, no, she had invited him for dinner. I mean, what baloney is all this? And I'll tell you, <clears throat> I think sometime early 2005, she said, uh, you, you are now dabbling in uh, defense deals. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, there's a file with you, <clears throat> which is about the defense deal with the African delegate. She said, yeah. Yes, you write about there being a mole in your ministry. Wait, wait, wait a minute, I said, listen, is my signature on the file? And how do you know? They said, I haven't written. I said, how do you know about the file? We well, talked to Parnam. I said, yes, I did talk to him. I told him, this delegation comes, this defense matter, I'm sending them to you. But are you saying that Pulok Chatterjee was taking official files to Sonia Gandhi and showing them to her? Is that well, what you're Mr. saying? Uh, I didn't work in the Prime Minister's office, but Mr. Sanjay Baru did for six years, uh, if he says it. And Mr. Manmohan Singh didn't. But because there's... But uh, you have a former Prime Minister saying on record that no official files were ever sent to her. So, well, who I'm, do we believe? That's up to you. But the facts are what... San, uh, Sanjay Baru has said and what I am saying it, what many other people are saying it. Do you know how many congressmen have telephoned me to say that good for you, you brought this out? More than 50. More than 50 congressmen yes. have called you to say you did the right thing yes. by writing this yes. book. Yes, and they are from various parts of India. What about Manmohan Singh's uh, uh, statement that private conversations should not be made public for capital gain? No, uh, I mean, how do you, I am not sure of money. You're selling a book. What? Your book is going to, well, I mean, your, it's, it's your book. This is all part of your book, which will be sold from which you... No, no, I'm saying so. <coughs> Public figures have no private lives. You read <coughs> Kennedy's life. What is not written about it? <coughs> you read uh, the books of, uh, um, at one time, his uh, NSA, J. M. Dixit. <coughs> Every conversation I reported on Sri Lanka, his book, Assignment Colombo, is full of private conversations, which he had with the Prime Minister of Rajiv Gandhi, everybody. They're all there in the book. Read Kissinger's books. You are a public figure, you are a historic figure, you have no private life. Your private life comes into great scrutiny. And for Manmohan Singh to say <coughs> that they are not conversation, <coughs> he may remain reticent and that's what has harmed him. He hasn't got the guts to come out and say what the facts of life are. You've called him spineless in your book. Oh, what would you call him? No, I'm, it's not for me to say. You no, no, I'm asking you. Well, I think he certainly uh, didn't seem to stand up, perhaps, to a lot no, of things that exactly were happening in his cabinet. the same thing I've said in other words. In other words. Uh, finally, Mr. Singh, critics will say also that your political leanings, in a sense, have also changed now over the last... A uh, few years. Uh, we have seen your son is now a BJP MLA. You yourself uh, are full of praise for Mr. Modi's leadership, also his foreign policy. And the accusation then is that that is what is motivating you as well to speak out against the Gandhis now. I saw Mr. Modi <coughs> in uh, Ahmedabad on the 4th of February. This is, this is three months before the elections. And I told him that I have not come to ask you for anything. I have noticed that in the last five months, <coughs> you have not said a word about foreign policy. The Prime Minister ultimately also foreign minister. So he said, or maybe you should begin with the neighbors because we have neglected our neighbors. Prime Minister Manmohan Singh hasn't been to Pakistan. <coughs> He's not been to Nepal, not been Bhutan, Sri Lanka, as far as I remember, only Bangladesh. As if you're not getting on well with our neighbors, then how do we get on outside this? So put this particular thing in. This is what I told him. Secondly, I, I said, you know, I'm 30 years older than you. Probably don't know who I am. He said, no, I know who you are. And I also know that your son is elected. So I used to sitting here. <clears throat> and I've been Nehru White all my life. And I've said so in my book. I'm not blind to his uh, faults, but he was a very, very great man. There's no two ways about it. He was not a great foreign minister. That's another <coughs> thing. So I also told him <coughs> that foreign policy, diplomacy, was very complicated. Foreign policy, what you do, diplomacy, is how you do it. 
and they have to get together to make it effective. But it does sound like your political leanings have changed then. What? Your son is now in the BJP. But I am not responsible for my son. It, 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 you do are, 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 are full of praise for Mr. Modi's leadership. I mean, the, cr the criticism is that some, you know, Nadpur Singh is now in a different camp. No, but why? I am not a member. I haven't gone to, have I made a statement about Mr. Modi that he is great guns? I haven't said a word. I have not written. Uh, why should I say anything? There I went to tell him that yes, you should speak about foreign policy. Why don't you, if you are going to be Prime Minister of India? I didn't ask him for a job. <clears throat> I have written that I met him. <clears throat> when Sonia came and I told her that I have seen Modi. <coughs> but I will ask you again, sir, before I, before I wrap this up. Do you think you should have spoken about uh, Sonia Gandhi's faults and her style of functioning and the lack of democracy in the Congress, as you put it, much earlier? Much before Volcker happened, when you were the insider and perhaps could have... But it didn't speech. happen that time. There were but you say who, she was always like <clears throat> that, as a leader. No, there are so many... Listen, none of us is one dimensional person. She has a multiplicity of identities. Uh, I am a, a good Rajasthani, I am a good Hindustani, I am a good... Uh, my Insaniyat, my Rajasthaniyat, Hindustaniyat, Insaniyat don't conflict. They are part of me. So they're, each of us has a particular, uh, uh, we are all split personalities and you know this is a great discovery of Freud, before that we, did, we didn't know, but he had reduced the individual into different sects of our lives and this is what so happened. So you are saying you saw her real face only after what happened with you? No, no, because the reaction of her I didn't expect, I mean it's horrendous, I mean I, as I told you that I full of praise for his family. Uh, now, the Rajiv Gandhi didn't make made me a minister because he liked my face. He thought there's something uh, he can contribute. Uh, Indraji didn't ask me to come to uh, join her secretariat for five years and because uh, she thought I was a duffer. Because they thought, you know, I had something to offer and I did. Well, uh, many sensational claims there in your book, Mr. Singh. It still continues to create waves. Thank you very much to, uh, for speaking to us on NDV. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.